the seven, seven, seven things you need to know about Muslim community patrol cars in New York City. First, let's take a look at the cars and the patches worn by their officers. Here is just one of the Muslim community patrol cars roaming the streets of the Big Apple. Just below is a picture of an NYPD police car. You can see the striking similarities. Both are four Tauruses. Both are white. Both have blue decaling, with similar lettering and emblem placements. Even the patches worn by Muslim community patrol officers are similar in design, color, and the graphics of NYPD patches. Take a look at this center graphic. Other than some slight color and shading distinctions, the two are identical. Currently, there are three Muslim community patrol cars on the streets of New York City. By the end of summer 2019, organizers hope to have seven patrol cars with plans on purchasing 23 more in the near future. If they are successful, that will mean 30 Muslim patrol cars will be canvassing the streets of America's most visited city. And their attention is clear. They want to confuse both residents and visitors about whether they are an official branch of the NYPD. This was made obviously clear when organizers known as the Muslim Community Patrol and Services took this photo. Pictured here is the vice president and co-founder of MCPNS, standing next to his car in front of the 72nd Precinct of the New York Police Department. What could be a more obvious attempt to camouflage Muslim community patrol cars as a branch of the NYPD than this picture of a uniformed officer standing outside a police station next to a police-looking vehicle? Muslim Community Patrol and Services wants citizens to think they are an official division of the NYPD with the power to arrest, apprehend, enforce law, and even intimidate. Though MCPNS claims they are a security force to protect the city's mosques, in secret they admit their real purpose is to enforce Islamic law on citizens. When one of our undercover informants was interviewed about becoming a Muslim community patrol officer, he asked the director of operation Mawash Fatma, whether Sharia law would be enforced. Of course, she told our informant, we'll enforce it on Muslims first, then on non-Muslims. We're going to enforce both Sharia law and American law. It would be contradictory, she said, to only enforce Sharia law without also upholding the laws of the land, meaning American law. So the second thing you need to know is Muslim community patrol officers will be enforcing Sharia law on Muslims first, but eventually on non-Muslims as well. The third thing you need to know is that the controversial American-hating Siraj Wahaj is responsible for deploying the Muslim patrol units. Siraj Wahaj serves directly beneath the director of operations, Mawish Fatma. He's no stranger to running Muslim security units. It's something he's been doing since the late 1980s, when he first formed a 50-man task force called the Muslim Patrol. The stated goal of that Muslim Patrol was to rid the Fulton Commercial District in Brooklyn of its drug dens and crack dealers. Newsday described Wahaj's Muslim Patrol as a police force as heavily armed and sometimes as violent as the dealers it is hired to confront. A high-ranking official of the 73rd Police Precinct proposed this question to the New York Times. In the end, what is the difference between a bunch of vigilantes using force to take over a street corner and a bunch of drug dealers? It still involves gun battles and flying bullets. But Imam Wahaj is better known for something else, his desire to replace American democracy with Islamic rule. Islam is better than democracy, he once said. In time, this so-called democracy will crumble and there will be nothing. And the only thing that will remain will be Islam. Perhaps most shocking of all is the fourth thing you need to know about Muslim community patrol and services. 
One of the individuals in charge of hiring Muslim Community Patrol officers is Earl Banks, who has twice been arrested for murder and convicted once. A recently passed New York State law prevented us from obtaining his booking photos. But we know he was sent to prison for life in 1970 for burglary, kidnapping, and murder. He only served 15 years. By that time, he had changed his name to Ali Mustafa and was soon found in the employment of Imam Wahaj, serving as a Muslim guard for his SSI security. It was in that capacity that two witnesses testified before a grand jury that they saw Earl Banks, who is better known today as Ali Mustafa, kill a man for refusing to obey his orders. The case never went to trial because one witness, after being shot, refused to testify. The sole remaining witness, Oscar Brown, was kidnapped and violently executed. He was found dead on a Brooklyn sidewalk with 16 gunshot wounds. Earl Banks, or Ali Mustafa if you prefer, not only recruits Muslim patrol officers, but serves as their field supervisor. The fifth thing you should know about Muslim Community Patrol and Services is that the son and two daughters of its Deputy Operations Director, Siraj Wahaj, are sitting in jail on federal terrorism charges. Siraj Ibn Wahaj, Hudra Wahaj, and Subhana Wahaj were all charged last March in 2019 in a conspiracy to stage deadly attacks on American soil, which U.S. Attorney John C. Anderson described as imminent. The indictment said the three children of Elder Siraj Wahaj, along with two others, were found to be operating a training compound to prepare for attacks on government, military, and other institutions. The first suspected training compound was discovered in Amelia, New Mexico. Another was located in Macon County, Alabama. The senior Wahaj denied having any prior knowledge about the alleged terrorist camps in New Mexico or Alabama and said he believed his children were suffering from a mental disorder. Perhaps that is true. But a more likely scenario is that his children took seriously a 2008 sermon where he said, if only Muslims were clever politically, they could take over the United States and replace its constitutional government with a caliphate. The sixth thing you should know about Muslim Community Patrol and Services is that their officers are being trained in self-defense and suspect training techniques by New York's finest at the 72nd Precinct. This came about after a Muslim Community Patrol officer was nearly violently attacked and threatened to be shot when he tried to stop some young men from smoking pot outside of Masjid Qathar in Brooklyn. MCPNS boasted to the New York Times that officers from NYPD 72nd Precinct are now providing them with training methods to safely apprehend and detain suspects. This training will certainly raise constitutional questions on whether city tax dollars should be used to train a self-described religious patrol force, one that is bent on enforcing Sharia law and which only hires Muslims. The seventh thing you need to know is that MCPNS is seeking to recruit off-duty Muslim police officers to serve as volunteers to their patrol units. Such recruitment will allow MCPNS to have officers that can both arrest citizens and carry weapons. That addition will complete the image MCPNS wants to project. Their cars look like police vehicles. Their outfits look like police uniforms. The weapons not only look real, but they are real, and citizens will think twice before disobeying their orders. If you want documentation for all seven points, if you want to learn more, much more, about these Muslim community units, then click the link below. You may have to open the description box, but I assure you, it will be worth it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates, more investigative stories, and journalism where the mainstream media fears to go.